Good evening. And welcome to q and I'm Tony Jones and answering your questions tonight, Indigenous opera singer, composer and impresario Deborah Cheatham. Research scientist Brooke Magnanti, who funded her university studies by working as a London call girl and publishing her memoirs as Belle de Jour. Mia Friedman, founder of the influential women's website Mamma Mia. Author and historian Jermaine Greer, whose book The Female Eunuch helped launch modern feminism. And outspoken critic of old style feminism, the Australian's columnist Janet Albrickson. Please welcome our panel. Thank you. Q&A is live from 9.35 and you can join the Twitter conversation using the hashtag that just appeared on your screen. Our first question tonight comes from Georgia Wolfe. Good evening, Tony and, and panellists. Um, my question is, after many decades of fighting for equal rights for women, should women now expect that men are going to give up chivalrous, gentlemanly behaviour such as opening doors, um, standing on the roadside of the footpath and buying dinner on the first date. Brooke Magnanti, what do you think about that? Well, I mean, considering my former occupation, I think the men buying dinner was always taken for granted. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I certainly wasn't paying. But in general, I think it's just being polite, having good manners, you know? It doesn't take the man opening the door, it takes whoever doesn't have the packages in their hand to open the door, whoever gets there first and whoever's most able. That's something that men should continue to do and women should take up as well. Mia Friedman. Yeah, I, Georgia, I'm in complete agreement with Brooke. I think that so much of what some people class as feminism can just be called politeness. So I, I often will hold a lift door open for someone if they have their hands full or my husband opens the car door for me. Um, Do you expect that of him? Do you expect chivalry, as it were? Well, it certainly surprised me the first time he did it because I'd never had a man do that for me before. And if he stopped doing it, would I notice? I don't know, but I think that, you know, the idea that, that you can't be a feminist and have a man buy you dinner or um, open a door for you, I think that's a little bit old school. Jermaine Greer. Well, um, one thing I think people have got to get used to is the truth that our population is getting a lot older. And it's important to open the door for people who are older than you, regardless of what sex yeah. they have. Yeah and people who are standing on public transport, mm. if you're able-bodied and uh, have no other problem okay. about getting up and giving your seat, get up and give it, regardless of what plumbing you've mm. got installed. <laughs> so you're, you're saying chivalry is not a male value, as it were? Chivalry goes with an assumption mm. that women are powerless and that women need men to intervene in their lives. That, and, and that itself is a misogynist assumption. Women are quite capable of taking care of themselves unless the dice are loaded, unless they're pregnant, unless they're carrying a child. Uh, I'm not so sure about carrying lots of shopping. I don't feel terribly compassionate about shopping. <laughs> <laughs> Janet Albrechtson. OK, I like to have a man hold my shopping. Um, and and I, I don't feel that I need to be having a baby on my on my side or somehow I'm a, um, a victim to have a man open a door for me or hold the lift for me. Um, I, I like that and I do expect that and uh, if, it, if it stopped happening I would notice. I don't see that a sign of me being in any way weak. Again I think it's a, a sign of living in a civil society. I think if equality means that we can never have that kind of to and fro between men and women, I think we've lost something. Janet, you recently uh, wrote a, a piece for The Australian in which you you actually wrote in support of a scene in Skyfall, the oh. James Bond movie. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you too surprise. much about that. What a surprise. Well, uh, the, sea, the scene that you wrote in support of was when James Bond actually goes unannounced into the shower of a young woman who's showering and perhaps waiting for him, perhaps not. Um, does chivalry have its privileges if you're James Bond? Um, let, let's go back to that piece. Um, there, there was criticism of the woman who was in the shower and, and the fact that she had let James Bond into the shower unannounced. But she had been waiting in her sexy, silky robe with two glasses of champagne and a bottle of chilled champagne um, on ice waiting for James Bond and he didn't turn up. Well, she thought he hadn't turned up, but he was just held up as it turned out. And, uh, yes, he turned up and he entered the shower and um, she was waiting for him. Big deal. 
big deal. Um, he, I don't think it's a matter of James Bond getting away with it. I, I think that um, she was very lucky to have James Bond enter her show. There was another, there was a, there, <laughs> another quote, yes, well, in fact, you do, you do sort of support that by going to say, I have a sneaking suspicion <laughs> that those grouchy women who deride Bond would secretly love to be a sultry Bond girl. Well, I just I think there is a there is a group of women who have taken um, carping a little bit too far. I think James Bond is just a fun. It's just a fun movie. It's two hours of you know exhilarating, silly fun. And if we write a whole column about it, yeah, but there are times. No, no, no. no, no. There, there are literally um, you know um, academic tomes written on whether Bond is a misogynist, a sexist, or this or that. It's just two hours of fun. I just wish he would wear his suits the right size. <laughs> <laughs> They're two sizes too small. He can hardly move. Oh, he can barely do the suits again. That's I'm dangerous sorry. territory. <laughs> Let's hear from Deborah Cheetah. Let's go, go back to chivalry. What do you think about the idea? Well, I think that the kind of chivalry that you mentioned, that's, that's kind of cheapening chivalry if it needed it. Uh, I think I agree with Brooke. It does go to courtesy that opening a door for someone, that can go either way, surely. And really, that doesn't prove someone's manhood or someone's weakness or whatever. It just proves that they have some common courtesy, which is all too rare now. So you should be opening the doors for someone that's older than you, someone that's carrying something, and don't feel weakened or powerless when someone doesn't do that for you. Let's move on. Our next question is from Gregory Black. Thank you, Tony. Uh, given the debacle that the last three years of Gillard government has represented in terms of both policy and process, given the fact that Prime Minister Gillard often seems out of her depth, uh, and given the endless examples of poor political judgment, piled on mistake, piled on general personal nastiness on the part of Prime Minister Gillard. Does the panel think that Julia Gillard has set back the cause of successful women in politics? <laughs> Mia Friedman. Well, Gregory, I find it hard to, um, you know, even fathom an answer where the first female Prime Minister could have set back um, the women's movement, for a start, um, and I'd probably refute some of the things you are saying. I think that there's no question that Julie Gillard um, and the last few years have been a disappointment to many people. Um, is that because of her gender? I don't think so. I think that um, her gender has certainly come into the way people have expressed that disappointment. Um, but you know, I know that when, whatever you think of Julia Gillard, I know that the day that the first female Prime Minister was sworn in by the first female Governor General, um, that was a day, you know, I gave, was pretty proud to tell my daughter about. Jermaine Greer. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, no, sorry. Well, I'm, I'm just wondering, I mean, as a complete outsider, why people thought it would be any different, really, because she's had to come up through such a male-dominated system. She has had to play the game to perfection to get where she is. Why does anybody expect that one woman is going to be able to embody all of the hopes and all of the dreams and all of the expectations of all of the women across the entire country? You know, we have the example, uh, say, back in the UK of Margaret Thatcher, where she was our first female prime minister, and I think people would consider her, as far as the cause of feminism goes, to be an enormous disappointment. But you cannot deny that she opened the door and that people did look up to her, regardless of where they were on the mm. political spectrum by comparison. What do you think, Deborah? I think it was unfortunate, the circumstance to begin with, that Julia Gillard took office. Uh, I was personally really disappointed, and I think, if anything, that set things back. But no, she's a politician. You could almost, I don't know, could they almost be gender neutral? You are something other. You are actually a politician. <laughs> and that is neither man nor woman. <laughs> Men, women, politicians. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Janet Albrechtson, let's go. I mean, she, she obviously does.